farming is a progression. Uh, first and foremost, um, l let's just draw a line in the sand here. I don't recommend making a farmer six star first period at all, n not whatsoever. Period. Like there's, it's it's probably the most pointless recommendation I've ever heard. But let me explain to you why. Um, so for those of you who are still here who haven't like rage quit the video because I said don't six star your farmer first. The reason being is this, as you guys know, runes are the, the most important thing for you to do in this game because that determines the strength of your monster. It's just like when you start playing an RPG and you're like, man, I gotta find a way to get that best weapon. You get that best weapon and then all of a sudden your team is just the shit, right? Hashtag the shit. So runes are the most important. So what happens is in a situation is when you start this game, right? You're going to go into a craze. Com is trying to get as much money out of you as possible, of course, which is understandable because they're a video game company. Um, you, you, you know, you're overwhelmed with this monster collection. You're like, oh my god, I got to catch them all. Uh, so in an attempt to, to summon all the monsters in the world, you, you're buying summoning packs, you're doing your thing. So now you got all these monsters, how do you level them? Right? So you go online, you Google, you YouTube, you say, oh, how do I level up my monsters quickly? You find the, the nearest farming guide. People are going to be like, six-star your farmer first. You're like, okay, boom, on it. You six-star your farmer first. You get to a point where you have a six-star farmer. You, you're, you know, at this point, you've already cleared Famine. you got your light and dark scroll, and then you go into Famine, and then you lose. Why? Why do you lose? Because your runes are shit. So now you have a six-star, okay? You've wasted all of your units. you fed all of your monsters. You have no dungeon team, no nothing, because you spread yourself so thin, and you made your six-star, okay? You got a six-star now that is unable to do shit. <laughs> right all he can do is level up units so in terms of runes that puts you that that forces you in a situation where now you're basically stuck in the scenario um and you're left to your whims at whatever health stage you could successfully clear which is probably garen force mount says mount white or kabir ruins at best okay depending on the the element and type of your unit so you're you're stuck in those four first four stages period now with that being said with the six star farmer, do you have an option if you're able to solo hell in all four of those stages? Of course, you can farm four star runes in hell on the hell boss if you can clear the hell boss um, consistently. If you need fatal, you're going to be kind of in a pickle though because the golems on the hell stage are kind of tough. Um, and I don't mean tough like tough, but like, you know, they're, def they're defensive units, so obviously they're a little bit harder to kill, especially if your chosen six-star farmer uh, has an element disadvantage or he doesn't have defense break or deal enough damage, which he probably won't because you won't have the runes required for him to be efficient. Um, so in order to avoid that situation, what I recommend is building a team of five stars, specifically your dungeon team first, moving into Karos, getting the runes that you need, and then making your farmer later. The reason why I recommend that is because in Mount Sis, Garen Forest, Mount Sis specifically, um, in Mount Sis, it's the easiest hell, hell stage to farm. Literally, if you have a three star with element advantage or four star with element advantage or, you know, whatever, um, with decent runes, specifically meaning that they meet the rune crit criteria that they need. So if they're an attack type, their attack crit rate attack, uh, percentages, of course, guys, or their attack percent, crit damage, attack percent with high enough crit rate. Um, again, these are the runes that you'll be getting from 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 Keros. Um, these stages are relatively easy to farm, guys. You know, so it's just like you can take, for instance, uh, do I have any rune three stars on me right now? Um, who do we have? We got McKean. All right, so McKean right now is ruined as a water attacker. So we use McKean, right? So she's a four star right now, just, you know, barely awakened and we'll take her to stage two because that's, you know, obviously the corresponding stage and she has the best chance to win here. Um, she has no defense break. Obviously, she has her own little heal, but we'll take her in here and I'll show you guys. This is the hell stage. Literally, any any three star, like you can take a three star beefy unit, HP type, defense type, attack type, whatever type, and take them in here and find that you find success <laughs> you, you, you know what i'm saying and be able to solo farm or do whatever you need to farm and there's not heavy requirements and this is why i recommend five starring a team first because with a four star unit you can solo farm a health stage you can still get experience is it going to be the best no it's not going to be the best in experience is it going to be the best in in energy return ratio no 
But as human beings, we have a tendency to want the best things in life without doing the work for them. So we just go in and be like, boom, let me, I just want to do fame and hell right out the gate with my water slime uh, just because such and such told me to do it. Um, and unfortunately in life, I mean, that's just not how it works. So when you guys are going through these things, and this is why I don't recommend six starring a farmer first, is not because, you know, whatever, you know, the clouds aren't aligned or the stars aren't aligned or whatever. It's just because you don't have to. Um, I feel that your first six stars should be units that support your cause, specifically Bella, Vero, units that are that you're going to be with for a long time, not units that you might six star now because you think you need a farmer and then never use it again for the rest of your summoner's war existence. Because the problem with six starring a farmer early on is chances are really you probably will not use that unit ever again unless it's like a nat 5 or a crazy nat 4 that you know you're going to be using for all of progression. But how would you know that as a beginning player? You won't. So in order to save you the wasted resources, because in this game you're going to pull good units no matter who you are, no matter where you are, no matter how long it takes, you're eventually going to pull great units. So I don't want you to waste the resources up front when you could be using those those resources to evolve and move further in Carol's dungeon. So, after we talked about that, and I showed you guys the example, how do you make your farmer, okay? When you're building a farmer, guys, it's all about runes and elemental advantage. So, based on an element. So, give me an element. Let's say we did fire. You pick Garen Force. You're building a fire damage unit. Then you're going to find a, a floor that's all wind or mixed with fire and wind then you have your stage. You will not go to a stage that has water in it, okay? If you're water, you're gonna go to a stage that has either all fire or all water, or excuse me, all fire or all water. You will not go to a stage that has wind. If you're going to a wind stage, you're gonna go to a stage that has all water. You're not going to go to a stage <laughs> that has all fire or any fire units mixed between. That's, that's, that's literally the simplest thing that you have to do. Next thing you guys are gonna check is what type of monster are you dealing with? Are you dealing with a monster that can heal itself? Um, are you dealing with a monster that has HP absorption? Those are typically the most valuable farming type attack units or defense type or HP type, whatever type of unit you're building. Those are typically the most effective farmers. Units that have some kind of way to heal themselves. So if they can heal themselves or if they absorb a life from the enemy, some of the best farming type units in the game. Why? Because it saves you the time of having to go to Necro, which is a waste of time anyway, unless you're in game, um, to, to farm vampire runes. Okay? So, and that's one more thing I wanted to talk about, guys. You're going to hear a lot of players telling you guys, go get vampire runes so you can farm. You don't need it, bro. It's unnecessary. If you're solo farming, if you're trying to power level any type of unit solo, let's say in Mount Sage, you're getting almost 10,000 XP a stage, and you only need <laughs> basically a, a well run three star or a well run four star to do it, you know? So um, it's, it's just unnecessary. And as your runes get better, guys, this, your farming stage will naturally get better. So in terms of everything else, it's just <coughs> excuse me. So, <coughs> wow. Well, I can't talk, but as you guys get better, okay, so like your runes get better, you, your grade gets better, your, your four star is going to turn into a five star, your five star is eventually going to turn into a six star, um, you're going to find yourself moving forward. Um, you'll find that same wind unit that you were only able to do Mount Sis stage three with is now able to do Hide and Eye Hell stage five. Then you'll find as you evolve, now your, your fire unit that you've been focusing on that's been working so hard uh, in Mount Sis or Kabir Ruins is now able to do uh, to more desert, you know, on hell, okay? Or your water unit that's been working so hard has been stuck in Mount Sis for ages or Mount White Ragone is now able to do uh, uh, Rofagus Ruins on hell, treachery, boss, you know what I'm saying? Um... So that's just something that you guys will, will, will look at and your units will constantly evolve. So how do you pick your initial farmer? So my strategy, and this is what I teach, I mean, you guys can go either way. You guys can go scenario farming if you guys choose to, if that's your preferred, preferred mode, that's fine. Um, <clears throat> but what I, what I like to show people is that I like to condense all of your moves in chess or in life, guys. You don't have to be 10 steps ahead of your opponent. You just have to make sure that your next move is the best move that you make, period. 
So what I recommend is when you guys, like for those of you guys who have seen my other videos, like my Giants guides and all that other stuff, when you guys are building your Giants team, because that's essentially the first team that you're going to build, typically most of the time your team is going to be some kind of leader that influences your HP or defense. You're going to have some kind of attacker, okay? Usually a wind attacker um, or whatever attacker you guys have chosen for your Giants progression. Um, the rest of your team will be supports, but that attacker for your Giants team will usually be your farmer. The reason why is because why build 5,000 units when you can build one team that does everything for you? Like I, like, I cannot stress this enough, guys. Your Giants team will be your B10 Magic team, will be your B10 Elements team, will be your TOA 100 team. <laughs> like, I can't, like, I cannot stress this to you guys enough. Like, literally, like, giant, your Giants team can get you through most of all the game content until you start getting into more advanced things. But that Giants team, you can focus on and literally do everything with. So why build 50 units when you can build five units that can take care of most everything for you uh, until you're ready to get into later dragons, necropolis, etc. Right? So your giants attacker, whoever that is, uh, let's say for example, your giants attacker ended up being, I don't know, marble. <laughs> where's, where's marble at? Where's he at? Uh, or olivine, sorry. But your giants attacker ended up being marble. Okay. Uh, marble is, is kicking it here. He's at four star. So now, um, let's just pretend that, not Marble, I keep calling him a different name, but Olivine, sorry, Olivine. Let's say Olivine is your Giants attacker. Um, you, you're using him because he removes negative effects and he increases attack bar. So what do you farm him with? So now you're working on him, you're getting his damage up. So in the meantime, you're in Giants, you're working on him, he's four star, five star, or you're working on six starring him, and you need to level him, and you need to level fodder. What do you do? You take his ass right to Mount Sis at stage three. Um, if he's stronger than what, what, what my Olivine is, you take him to Mount White, hell, you know? Or if he's stronger than that, you take him to High Night Ruins, stage four, or stage five, excuse me. Um, and it's, it's really just that progression, guys. It's, it's really just that simple. My job is to condense your moves so you have more power, more flexibility uh, to choose and build who you want to build later. So we have to lock the foundations in place in terms of building a farmer for you guys um, to get everything squared away to make your life as easy as possible so you can enjoy the fun things in summoner's war <laughs> which is not scenario farming or essence grinding <laughs> just just saying so again you know the simplest way guys to to make a farmer is to to select an attacker that's you know in your 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 dungeon team so if that attacker is in your dungeon team it it minimizes the amount of of stuff that you're going to have to focus on now again if they have life drain or stuff like that are they more effective of course if you have a unit like trevor whose power increases as they get weaker of course i mean are there are there uh clutch units yes but you can essentially use any type of unit so now let's get down to the nitty grit okay so now that we've explained and let's just rehash everything so shortcut mode is how to build a farmer Select elemental affinity. Make sure that that element is strong against the stage that you're going to. Make sure the rune criteria is matching because, you know, that's what it is. And then um, the most effective way to pick it is going to be through Carol's Dungeon. Uh, for the rune effectiveness, uh, you know, you guys sh should watch, um, definitely watch the, the rune guide videos because uh, those go more in depth in the type guide videos that I've posted. Um, those will help you guys. Uh, get a rune set going for your particular type of monster, guys. Uh, again, very helpful videos for the, for beginners and intermediates and people who are trying to optimize the rune power. Um, but definitely check those out. So that's pretty much it. Simple guide to farming, condenser steps, elemental advantage. Go to the stage that works for you on hell, win the game. Okay, um, and you guys can start farming hell stages very very early on. That just is what it is. Uh, for everyone else, for all the sticklers out there that are like, why hasn't he cleared the map on hell? It's because it doesn't matter. Um, until Kam gives me some outstanding reward. This is my third account now. Like, I'm not clearing hell stages unless I absolutely need to. <laughs> okay. Um, so, for instance, like on Fame and Stage 1 and 2 are, are literally the only stages that you're going to need. Unless you're trying to farm like four or five star revenge runes from the boss, which I don't care about because I'm in Karos. Makes sense? Because uh, in Carol's you're getting the best rooms in the game, so by this time, I'm not worried about 
the scenario. I cleared the scenario initially now because they added the, uh, on normal, they added the rewards to get the room sets and to unlock uh, rifts and raids. But other than that, honestly, guys, the rest of it is, is pointless. The 30 crystals that players will tell you to clear the map for are ridiculous because you get to a fresh map and you're trying to get three stars on a map, you're going to spend way more than an energy refill to clear all stages just to get that, that crystal back. So basically, it's just wasted time. <clears throat> so, but thought now that we got all that uh, all that ranting out of the way, <laughs> let's get down to the mid grip, man. So everybody talks about Feynman. Feynman, 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 Feynman. How do you build for Feynman? Vampire runes, right? Is what you guys typically hear. But this is this is more kind of clutch here. In Feynman, guys, normal and hard are your best friends. Hard mode is probably the best farming place period in the game why because a lot of times you're getting three energy back per clear so it's turning Feynman into a one energy run okay which makes Feynman the most efficient place to farm how do you farm Feynman you build a water attacker when do you farm Feynman when you're building your dragon's team when you're building your dragon's team you're building a water attacker for the boss okay so again I mentioned farming is like progression when you start the game, you'll have a Giants team. You'll have a Wind Attacker, okay, or whatever attack you guys have. Your Wind Attacker or Water Attacker, whatever you guys build for your Giants team, is literally going to be your farmer until probably to more desert, okay? Once you guys are autoing Giants tent and you're clearing TOA, you're starting to work on a Water Attacker. That Water Attacker will be your fame and farmer, okay? And that's how farming progression will happen. Your farming progression will move forward with your water attacker that you'll use for dragons. Whether that's Sigmaris, whether that's Stella, whether, wh whoever it is for you. <laughs> that's who it is. It doesn't necessarily have to be a specific unit, but that's who it'll be. You'll take that water attacker. I can't talk. You'll take that water attacker to Fame and Heart. Because Fame and Heart is cake compared to Fame and Hell. So you can use pretty much anybody. Like, let's use Eloine, for example. Eloine's a six star that I've been working on for a straight face speed dragons comp. Uh, his damage and stuff is not quite there yet. Neither are his runes or his speed. Uh, but we'll use him for the example, just so you guys can see. So 9764. Uh, in terms of sheer speed, how fast you can clear fame and hard versus fame and hell until uh, you get the runes that you need. Um, this is bar none. I mean, it's just awesome very efficient it's very fast the money is okay it's not as good as it used to be when we had violent runes but it's okay you know it's decent um but you can get it done and it's not going to be a major stress to you as a player um i recommend this uh using your water attacker here is just because you're not going to be building other units you see what i'm saying like if you're here you might as well be killing two birds with one stone and doing what you got to do um, so like if you're building a water attacker for fame for uh, for dragons you might as well bring them here and 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 win both sides of the coin so again you know I mentioned units that have a self heal that can heal themselves or have some kind of vampire thing built in are the most effective I don't want you guys breaking off in the necro to try to farm vampire rooms um, you know until later once you guys get into necro okay <laughs> once you guys get into necro uh, you have, you know, a couple of options. Necro is typically going to happen in game, top 300, which is really, honestly, when you should be doing fame and hell anyway. Because um, by the time you guys are going to need vampire runes is when you should be, guys, when you should be even worrying about fame and hell. Until then, normal and hard are fine. Specifically, hard is great. If you guys have um, uh, been farming your runes consistently, also... That really takes Feynman out of the picture, uh, you know, in all reality. Because if you guys have built your Wind Attacker, you know, good enough, or you guys, by this time, you guys will be moving into speeding up your Giants 10 run. And let's say you guys have pulled a Mirror from uh, Guild Battle, or if you guys have been working on Lucian, or any kind of strong Wind Attack type unit, you guys can move right into Aiden Force on Hard or Hell, Stage 1. Um, and that's something that you guys can really look at too as well, you know, when you guys are building your teams so you guys can pull through. Um, so, you know, that's a big thing. Um, another thing, although slower, um, you can also use units that can heal themselves, um, you know, as a farmer. So, for instance, this is Emma. Um, she can heal herself. She busts her own defense. She has a shield. Although slow, does it still work? Yes. 
Um, so for you free to play players out there who are worried about letting your energy refill while you guys are farming so you guys tend to like longer clear times, Unisec can heal themselves and buff themselves um, are also viable additions in farming fame and hell guys. So that's i mean that's pretty much it i mean it, we covered it all guys uh to to give it a short rehash recap on how to build the farmer elemental advantage um basically pick the farmer that's going to be your attacker in your corresponding team your giants attacker will be your first farmer after that your second farmer will be your your dragons attacker as you move into Feyman. um if you decide to do a one-stop shop you could just make your wind attacker from giants your farmer throughout the whole damn game because that would take you all the way to aiden and of course as you guys move into necro raid and you have better runes and all that jazz you can move into later stages uh specifically like charuka remains and stuff like that to get the maximum amount of experience necessary uh, if you guys are wondering about uh rifts now the dimensional rifts or whatever because those experiences you know obviously is insane because uh, it's really fast uh that is specifically just going to be elemental advantage again as well um and just being able to do that normal or hard to just be up to you if you have a unit again that can absorb life uh or is ruined vampire you know at that stage in your game then that will be uh, more effective but i mean that covers it guys that's how you effectively build a farmer um i i think i think i think we got it all i think we covered it all um if you guys like this video if you guys learned a lot from this video and this helped clear up some stress for you uh, from having to like build a farmer because that's what everybody says then definitely give this video a thumbs up let's get this video to 500 likes and uh if you guys didn't learn shit or if this video was terrible thumb it down but if you're gonna thumb the video down please tell me why so we can continue to make the content that we bring to you guys better um but that that covers it i mean i'm assuming you guys want to see if uh emma i was about to call her elsa <laughs> but but I'm assuming you guys want to see if uh, Emma over here at level 33 is going to finish this. But um, yeah, so I guess we'll finish. I what do you guys want to talk about? You know, while we do this, I don't know. <laughs> but no, actually, we'll just call her guys because uh, she's probably going to be here for like another two minutes. And I don't know if you guys want to sit here for two minutes and watch this because self healing. Oh my god. And glancing hit and defense break takes a long time. But yeah, but thank you guys all so much for tuning in. I love you guys. Uh, we're, get, we're pulling close to 6,000 subscribers, guys. Let's help as many players as we can. Share the video. But I love you guys. We'll catch you in the next video. Peace.